Okay, so uh, I want to show you my handbrake. I'm not sure if I'm going to call it a drag handbrake or a rally handbrake or, or whatever, really. Um, so basically, it's handbrake with no ratchet. So uh, you pull it up, obviously, you're at the start line of the tantrum pod, or if you're not, you're on the street. Um, you can preload the gearbox a little bit so you're not, not moving anywhere. Drop the handbrake and you're off. Um, so it does work really, really well. Um, so not not pressing buttons and pushing it down manually. It's literally just a case of drop and go. Um, however, to pass the MOT, that's the lockable. So uh, what you do is you pull it up and press the button in, and to release it, you're off again. So it takes a little bit of getting used to when you when you first start driving it, but I, I don't even think about it now to be honest with you. So it's just normal. Um, yeah, and it works really, really well. Uh, so I'll try and show you how uh, how we've created it. So this is a, what I've used as my prototype, so this isn't off my car, actually, I, I, well, I like to think I improved on, it, on the design of this one. Uh, this is what I was given very kindly by a friend, um, and say, because this is the, the first drag handbrake I have used on a car that I bought and then actually sold back to him, but he very kindly gave me the handbrake. You can see the stupid thing wore off. Um, so I was vaguely trying to show you how it works. So on a, oh, on a repro one, or a standard handbrake, and um, you've got your pole there, and this sits inside here, and obviously you press the button, which pulls the pole away from the uh, the teeth, releases the handbrake, and then the spring pushes it back, which locks the handbrake, and that's how it works. And what effectively you've done on this one is reverse that. So it's hard to see it being black, but... Uh, whoop. So it's like that. So the, the bar is slightly bent, um, but it hooks around the, the pole there. So the pole on this one's a different shape, which I'll try and show you in a minute. Um, so rather than being that way around, you push in from the bottom. And all that does obviously when you press the button, it pushes the pole. I'll try and show you. It pushes the pole into the into the uh, cogs, which this one doesn't have at the minute, uh, rather than pulling it away. And that's how it locks. And then the, the force of the, the handbrake pulling back down is actually what locks it into place. So obviously when you release it, it clicks back up and you can just drop the handbrake and you're off. So it's very simple really. Um, it's just about changing the, uh, the pole design and, and flipping this round. Uh, and it works a treat. So I'll just show you that next. Right, sorry about the angle guys. Uh, unfortunately I'm struggling to get the camera anywhere where you can actually see what I'm doing while I'm working on stuff. So, uh, I've decided to, to modify uh, the aftermarket one. Reason being, if I could complete balls of it, I'm not too fussed. It's the aftermarket one. I can. Uh, I've still got the original ones then. Um, also, I kind of like the blingy chrome one. So if I can use it, I'm gonna use it on my uh, on the Lanchester project. Um, so I'm take it apart. I only need that for now. So the first thing we need to do is remove the pole. Um, now it's just free on one side and it looks like it's been riveted and at the other side so I'm probably going to have to grind some of the edge off to to get it out or... Oh no! I think if, if I open it up I should be able to get it straight off. So uh, I'll make a start on that first. Okay, the way I kind of did it, which is a real barge and I probably shouldn't have done it really, is I just knocked a wedge in uh, to open up the... Uh, the casing, I said I didn't really care because it wasn't a uh, genuine, one, genuine one anyway. Um, in hindsight, I should have probably drilled it out. Okay, the pole measures just under 5mm uh, thickness, so we need to find some steel to uh, to make something with that's about 5mm thick. That's the next challenge. So I took the opportunity while the, um, the citric acid bass were there to, to clean the, the metal up hence it's not looking quite so rusty. So I've drawn around with a white pen just so you can, can see easily, but what we're basically going to be recreating is that part there, because obviously the, that's what the hook sits on. Uh, so I've drawn around it with a big massive chunk of white pen, and I'm going to uh, just grind that shape out first of all. Just
Okay, so I've uh, ground it so that it sits flush inside the the hook, and at any point on the the movement there, the ball is shaped that it's not trying to push out of the hook, basically. So it's it's always flush against the hook. So effectively, it's going to do that. So we're replicating the the ball at the top, but the ball's at the bottom this time. Um, it needs to be low enough so that it sits below the below the base of here. Uh, otherwise, it'll, it'll crash later, and I'll show you why. Okay, so this is vaguely the the shape I'm going to be creating from the the pole, uh, and obviously the piece of metal which I've now created, which goes behind it. Now, if you compare it to the the prototype, which is this one, uh, which is say the first one I used, the the gap at the bottom is slightly wider. Um, so basically, on the prototype, I found you had to press the button a little bit too far, so the button basically went all the way flush to the end of the housing before it actually fully activated. Um, and I'm obviously trying to avoid that. So what I've done is I've separated it and I've pushed the, the bulb forwards a little bit further forwards than, than this one if you can see. Okay, I've marked it out with the old white marker. So I just need to remove uh, that part of the metal there. And then we'll look at joining the two together. And there we go. So I've just cut the excess off and it fits quite nicely. I've just used the, the bench grinder to try and profile it nicely so it fits nicely. Time to get the uh, the welder out. Okay, so we've got our new pole. Now it's just um, <clears throat> got a spot weld on there and I've ground it flat so I can test it. That's vaguely the shape we're looking for. Um, the the hook or the rod, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one was really gnarly there, actually. It was in a real bad way. I don't know why it was so bad, badly bent out of shape, so I've just spent a couple of minutes straightening it all as best I can because um, it had a twist in it. And then when you bend, it needs bending the opposite way. So normally it's bent slightly th that way, um, and obviously it now needs to follow the shape of the handbrake and go down for the pole. So just construct it to show you. And so it's easy enough to bend. Uh, just do it by hand, or at least this aftermarket one you can. can go on there. There we go. So I engage them there. Say it's it's not lining up at the minute because it's uh, the actual the case and the handbrake is bent and out of shape. But it'll be fine once it's together. That feeds in to the end. A little bit fiddly just getting it over there. Especially it together. There we go. Oop. So uh, that's engaged on the ratchet and the hooks in, on the uh, the pole there. Sticking out is about five mil of button. So I think it's uh, it's been this one's going in a touch more than the Ron and Beefcake. Um, that's not a problem though. Still got some buttons stuck out, so it feels comfortable enough. Um, I'll be honest with you, each handbrake looking at them is slightly different, so that might vary anyway, depending depending depend on which handbrake you've actually got. Right, so we'll just take it all apart. So I'm very really happy with that. And I've finished welding the, the pole. It needs slightly straightening as well, because we're yeah, it looks slightly out of line. So yeah, I've finished it, uh, welding that, I'll grind it flat. And when we've got a finished article, I shall come back to you. So there's the, uh, the finished article. So it's all welded and uh, I'll give it a bit more shape uh, on the grinder. Taking all the high spots off. Make sure it's banged straight. So I'm just going to reconstruct it and then we'll uh, move on to the next part. There's one more thing we've got to do. Okay, so we're all back together again. Um, looking quite nicely. It locks in place. Oops, wrong way around. So uh, it's pressing down like it would on the handbrake and then releases. Now you'll notice the, the hook jumps off the pole. Um, so the next stage we have to do is create something to stop that from happening. Uh, now on the prototype, the original one I had, <clears throat> um, what it is, they use a couple of washers welded onto the hook and create a kind of like a, a bucket or something which sits on the pole. Now on Beefcake I did it slightly differently, so I created the same thing effectively, but what I did is I actually drilled through and attached it permanently so it didn't come off. And one of the things I ran into issue-wise was it crashed, so when the, the pole came back, 
the the washer and nut crashed on the, the body of the uh, the handbrake. So you'll probably notice if you compare it to this one, then it's slightly larger. So uh, it sticks down further. So hopefully, no, I'm going to create something across there. Uh, it won't crash on the body of the handbrake this time around. Okay, so I've got a couple of uh, just mild steel washers. I uh, got the smallest holes of ones I could find. So in its resting state, that's vaguely where it's going to sit. You need to weld the washer so that you can drill a hole through the centre of the pole uh, to pin it. But also you need to obviously weld it so it fits the profile of the uh, the hook. And what you're going to find is just along here. Obviously this is crashing on the body here, so you need to effectively cut that across there. It's got a flat top to it and therefore it's not going to, not going to interfere with the body of the actual handbrake itself. So there we go. Not exactly my finest hour of welding. <laughs> It'll do the job. Unfortunately like a complete plonker, I forgot to cut the top off, which I meant to do before I welded it on. So uh, I'm going to mark it now and uh, then we'll take it off the angle grinder. Okay, so uh, I've ground it back carefully with a bench grinder, so I didn't mean to do it beforehand, but it didn't make much difference with it. Should now go through. There we go. Okay, so we're going to sort of mark it now. Drill in. Kind of can do it central, and I'm happy if it's have a bit of movement because it's not a, it's not a perfect arc as it goes it goes through. So you can see the eye got moved slightly in the hole. So I'm happy to have a a bigger hole there and possibly use a smaller nut just to like to move around a little bit. Uh, it's just about making sure it doesn't ping off basically or let it shoot backwards. Okay, we are officially done. Um, so I've actually just been back into it to um, centralise the pour. So it was actually scraping on the inside edge of the, uh, the housing. So I've actually put a little wa uh, a washer on there just to centralise it slightly. Because uh, it was making it slightly sticky. Um, but it's done now, so it's all back together in one piece. Um, obviously you lift your handbrake, push your handbrake, it engages. The pressure holds it on, and as soon as you uh, lift it up again, it automatically disengages. So I uh, say handbrake on, the pressure holds it there, as soon as you uh, lift it, automatically releases. Um, so yeah, now one thing I would do is don't open the uh, the casing like I did. Um, I really mashed it up a bit and uh, I'm not very proud of that at all. Um, so with Beefcake I actually drilled it all the way through and removed the, the pin in the middle of the pole completely. Um, and I put a little um, cap screw through like, uh, like I have done on on the little pole itself. Um, as I say, it is actually just riveted in, so uh, so you could unrivet it to be honest with you and then re-rivet it later if you if you do it carefully. Um, so yes, yeah, don't open it up like I did, but this is actually going to go on my um, Rat Rod project, which is really, really rough looking, so <laughs> it probably uh, it suits quite well. Um, but yeah, all done. Um, cheers guys. Okay, so I've got some handbrakes for you to look at. 
Um, I didn't actually realise until uh, I started doing the, the video how much longer an early handbrake is over a, a later one. Um, so this one I believe is from um, a 62 Beetle uh, from a friend 62. Uh, whereas this one, judging by the overspray, is the, the genuine one from uh, from my 72 bug. Um, so that's the difference between my zoom in a pre-67 and a post-67 handbrake, or handbrake lever. Uh, so yeah, complete stock one. This one is uh, a Repro. Um, biggest difference is, I think the, the both the Repros, the one on my car and this one both have the early style. Um, what should we call it? Kind of hanger or hook for the uh, for the rake cables, whereas that uses a stupid plate that you bolt through and then it wears this little pin off eventually and it's it becomes annoying and useless. <laughs> so I do prefer this and that's one of the reasons I actually use a repro way in mine. Uh, people say don't use the repros because they're flexible and they're rubbish but I'll be honest I haven't had any trouble with the one I use at all and it gets some cranking every so often so yeah, uh, takes your choices I guess. There is one difference actually, I'll show you, I'll just put the camera down. When you look at the travel or the ratchet, shall we call it, on the stock one We've got a fair distance there. Whereas on the Repro one, and I believe the one of my cars is the same. Ooh, we actually run out of uh, <laughs> run out of. Uh, there we go. So I'll just put it on the end. And if you compare them, there's more teeth on the original one than the Repro one. So there's more teeth towards the bottom edge, and it seems like the uh, the length of that's slightly longer. Or at least this one seems to come out further, so you lose the the pole inside the handbrake. If you so basically, if you didn't keep your handbrake adjusted enough, and then it get a bit too sloppy, which can happen. Uh, you end up pulling the handbrake up, and then it drops off the end end of the cog. And your, your pole goes in there, and you got to take your handbrake apart to, to sort it out, really. Anyway, so that's the three handbrakes uh, I was going to show you, and then this one is effectively the prototype 